Time now is 9:14. Thank you for staying with us. The Reynolds family and their legacy is a big part of Winston-Salem mm -hmm. history, of course. This Saturday, the Renolda House Museum of American Art will debut an exhibition focusing on the life and marriage of Smith Reynolds and Libby Holman. So to tell us more this morning is Phil Archer, the deputy director of the Renolda House Museum of American Art. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. So this exhibition is called Smith and Libby, Two Rings, Seven Months, One Bullet. Tell us the premise, really, what is the whole purpose of this? Well, the title is really the incontrovertible facts that we know. So Smith Reynolds did marry the Broadway torch singer and celebrity Libby Holman. They were married for just seven months and he tragically died at the age of 20 from a single bullet wound to the head, um, which sadly remains a mystery but that's part of the interest in the story it's a it's a local and really statewide mystery that has intrigued people for now 91 years and so this exhibition is really breaking down exactly what we know can you tell us what you know of what happened the night of july 5th into the morning of july 6th this was in 1932 there at Ronalda. Um, I'm not cracking the case necessarily. <laughs> Visitors will be able to, to leave with their own conclusions. Um, Smith is over my right shoulder, photographed in 1928. They married in 1931 and lived at Rinalda for one month. And they held a party on the evening of July 5th for a friend of Smith's, a fellow pilot named C.G. Hill. And there were 11 people total at the party. And uh, they boated on the lake and they canoed and they had barbecue came back to the house and in the wee hours of uh, July 6th, there was a single uh, bullet, a single gunshot heard by the night watchman and Smith's best friend, Ab Walker and Smith's wife, Libby. And uh, a jury uh, decided that it was not suicide and a grand jury was inconvened and actually indicted his wife and his best friend for the murder, which is what made it a, a national scandal. Wow, so I assume this lasted for many months and even years following this sort of mystery that ha that transpired. So specifically, what happened in this area? I guess I'm, you know, curious about in Winston-Salem. How did the public react? Well, the public ate it up every day. I mean, there, there were updates in the, the Winston-Salem Journal, but actually coast to coast um, news bureaus created Winston-Salem bureaus so that they could could feed this, uh, in the height of the Great Depression, this fascination with a household name that had fallen on on, on tragic times. And it, of course, you had the celebrity aspect, you had Smith as a rising star of aviation as well. So in that era, uh, Hollywood, Broadway, and, and aviators, but they were, they, were, they were folk heroes. Um, so people paid incredibly close attention to it in those months. They never actually went to trial so that's another reason why the mystery has endured. Huh. And so what about Libby Holman? Where did life take her after all of this? Well, she was haunted by what happened in Winston-Salem. She wanted a trial, she said, to clear her name, and she didn't get that. But she did return to the Broadway stage. Um, Cole Porter offered her the lead role in the musical. Um, never could quite revive her, 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 her stardom, though, on, on the Broadway stage. So she turned to folk music and she began to research old ballads and she became long before the Greenwich Village um, trend and, and the, that heyday of folk music. She became an interpreter of old country songs. So she started the, the dress behind me. She was the first woman to wear a strapless ball gown. Hmm. So she started extremely glamorously, uh, but later on became a pretty serious interpreter of, of traditional music. Okay, well, we appreciate some of the history that you've provided here this morning. Now to the exhibition, Phil, if you could talk about, you know, your purpose with really holding this here and what you hope that it will draw from our community and kind of learning and going back in time as they view it. Well, public curiosity has remained strong, you know, despite all these years. And I want to make sure that visitors to Winston-Salem uh, if they have an interest in the story, because it was treated in, in several Hollywood films, people have a vague sense about a, a tragedy at Rinalda. And I want to make sure that they are rewarded for their curiosity and they don't meet blank stares or, or looks of puzzlement uh, from us at the museum or for people in, in town generally. So as I say, we're not solving the case, but we're sharing a lot of 
uh, stories. We're sharing a lot of objects that have been in the museum's archives all these all these years. So you'll see really everything that Smith touched in his last uh, day on Earth and the sheriff's records afterwards and the investigation and um, a lot of photographs of them together. We've commissioned a film and all kinds of different audio visual components as well. Wonderful, Phil. Thank you for your time this morning. And everyone at home, you have the next few months to go and visit Smith and Libby debuts at the Ronalda House this Saturday. will be available through the end of the year, December 31st. To get started on planning your visit, just head to Ronalda.org.